This is BNN, the Bennington News Network. Hi, Jeff Grimshaw, BNN. Here in Merchants Park, we heard at the uh, most recent select board meeting that there's going to be some changes to here, Merchants Park, and to 336 Main, another green space that's going to happen. Um, we're going to show you what happened in the meeting, and let's take a look at it right now. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Michael McDonough. I'm the chair of the Better Bend Corporation Design Committee, uh, and uh, we're going to uh, present and talk with you tonight about uh, work that uh, our design committee and others have been doing on two very important opportunities within our community. Um, the, uh, the concept of what we're talking about tonight, and, and specifically that involves uh, the empty lot at 336 West Main Street in Merchants Park. Uh, the concept that we're going to be sort of trying to fit into or move forward uh, is uh, one that was born out of uh, the development of the uh, Memorial Park uh, between the courthouse and the Better Bennington Corporation, uh, which was done as a collaboration between the Bennington Rotary uh, and the town and a number of uh, service and design professionals within the community. And that concept was that we had an opportunity uh, to develop a series of well-designed spaces intimate and open, active and passive, forming a string of parks and becoming a hallmark of our downtown for residents, workers, and visitors. Uh, we have had um, a lot of discussion uh, about um, our, the lack of what traditionally one finds in uh, downtowns, particularly in Vermont, uh, that being the, the town common or the village green. Uh, we don't have those kind of spaces in Bennington. Uh, but we have the same needs uh, that those spaces in other communities fulfill. Uh, and so we want to find a, a way for us to do it uh, in, in a manner that is marketable, uh, in a manner that makes uh, the experience of our downtown uh, a, a much uh, heightened one. And so uh, the effort um, that we uh, move forward on uh, came after we approached the select board and um, offered our assistance in uh, assessing what these two spaces could provide uh, in terms of uh, open people space within our, uh, within our downtown. Uh, and the, the people behind this effort specifically is the design committee uh, and their names uh, are listed there uh, for you to understand uh, the people that, that serve on that committee. The first space that we want to talk about is um, what we have sort of termed the park at 336. We, we kind of want it to have uh, a catchy, quick ring to it. Uh, and so the park at 336 uh, became uh, at 336. And, and we even uh, have amongst ourselves been talking about this space simply as 336. Uh, now, as is the case with both of these, uh, a gift uh, presented the opportunity for us. Uh, the gift at 336 West Main Street uh, involved the purchase of that lot by Heather Manili and the then uh, turning over the ownership of that lot uh, to the town of Bennington for this specific purpose. The goal at 336 uh, is to create an accessible, quiet, and comfortable people place uh, within the confines that, that we will talk about. And as the case in both of these projects, uh, one of our initial tasks was to identify a design team that could move forward with the development of concepts for both of these spaces. And in this case, that design team certainly involved Heather, uh, the, the, the gifter of the, of the lot, uh, who has a very deep commitment to seeing something very positive happen there. Of course, the BBC Design Committee, which I've already referenced, and there are members of the Design Committee here tonight, Edie Sawitzki, uh, Milt Surdam, uh, and of course, uh, Heather is here as well, and our director, John Shanahan. And in both instances, we knew that though uh, we could certainly develop ideas and concepts, uh, we needed assistance uh, to formulate those ideas and concepts uh, into schematic design. Uh, and so in both projects, but in this one, in this case, uh, we sought out uh, the assistance of 
uh, two design professionals who are associates of uh, a local architectural firm, uh, Kelly Clark and Ryan Garibaldi. Uh, they're both here with us this evening as well. Uh, and over an extended period of time, uh, they assisted with and tolerated uh, the, uh, the, the input uh, and ideas, uh, foolish as they might have been, um, from uh, the design team and the design committee in particular. And we're very excited, not only with that 336, but also the second project we were talking about tonight. We're very excited about the product uh, that we put before you. Now, I should mention that the purpose tonight is to sort of bring you up to speed on the ideas that we have generated and to talk about how we move forward from this point. Now, uh, as I said, we're very excited about both of these concepts. Uh, there is an element of determining whether these concepts are in tune with what the town, the select board, and the community may wish to happen at both of these spaces. Uh, and so I, I don't necessarily expect us to leave here tonight with the thumbs up and, hey, that's great, but we want to generate the dialogue so that we can begin to move forward uh, after tonight's presentation. And so in each particular case, and, and in this instance at 336, uh, we did a, a, our own site analysis uh, and came up with a, a series of assets and challenges uh, that we face. Uh, and we've highlighted two in particular uh, that we think were important uh, uh, elements, uh, if you will, to inform uh, the way in which uh, this particular space could be designed and used. Uh, the first of those is the fact that it is framed by architectural elements, buildings, uh, creating an open room. Uh, and second, that it is a very small and intimate space. Uh, on the challenges side of the ledger, uh, there is the reality of rear access and utilities for adjacent buildings, uh, which are located at the back part of the site. Uh, in the small lot size. And it's interesting often that when you, when you list assets and challenges, you may find the same element on both lists. In this instance, it's a wonderful, small, intimate space. It's very small. So from that point, uh, we developed a design program, a, a sort of a, a listing of the things that we thought could be and, and which we would like to have accomplished at 336. And so working closely with Heather, uh, and, and we certainly respected uh, and, and uh, honored the commitment uh, that she has made. Uh, she has skin in this game uh, more than the rest of us. Uh, and of course, the design committee uh, formulated a series of design goals. Uh, and you see, I'm sorry, did I not? Yes, I did. Uh, and you see that list there, but uh, I would like to highlight uh, three in particular uh, that we think are important aspects uh, regarding the use of 336. Uh, the first would be to provide uh, primarily for passive activity. Small space, it's, it's not going to have a lot of activity in it, but there are a number of kinds of passive activities that occur, could occur within that space. Secondly, and, and this is a, 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 a definite design challenge, establish a human scale within the building canyon that is that space. Uh, it's, it's surrounded by buildings on three sides. Um, one of those buildings is a, is a very delightful human scale building, and that's uh, Katie Cleaver's uh, shop, and, and we're delighted to have Katie here with us tonight. Uh, and, of course, uh, on the opposite uh, side of that space uh, is uh, Fiddlehead, uh, the former uh, bank at the uh, Putnam Square. And so you, you've got very different things going on to, to frame and shape that space. Uh, and lastly, um, to incorporate a water feature as a unifying downtown theme. Now this goes back, very, back to the very uh, uh, beginnings of this thought process, the concept, uh, where uh, the Memorial Park uh, certainly was centerpiece by a water theme, a water element, uh, and that being uh, the restoration of the Bennington Elementary School fountain. And so uh, as we looked at this concept of a series of these spaces within our downtown, it certainly became uh, apparent and somewhat historically correct 
uh, that water could be an important element in all of these places. Uh, Bennington was once known as uh, the city of fountains because we had a wonderful array of fountains uh, with our natural water pressure coming out of the mountains uh, scattered throughout our community. And so uh, Kelly and Ryan uh, went to work and developed a, a very interesting and wonderful concept for us uh, that we want to put uh, before you tonight. Um, one is an idea generator uh, to illustrate the possibilities that exist. I think one of the problems with looking at an ignored piece of property uh, is to be able to envision what could be where what currently is not. Uh, and uh, they have done that in a very wonderful way. Uh, and uh, I, would, I would first note that one of the other very nice aspects of this lot uh, is that it is open to the street on its south side. Uh, and secondly, it doesn't offer uh, or doesn't pose a great deal of design constraints uh, as one looks at that empty lot that is just sitting there. Um, probably the, the largest design constraint is removing the fence uh, that uh, Heather is, is desperately um, hoping will, will one day soon disappear. And so uh, one of the first concepts that, that Kelly and Ryan hit on was the idea of bringing that space out into the sidewalk. And you'll see on the, on the plan to the right and the uh, perspective on the left, uh, you see that the, um, the space extends out into the sidewalk. And so you don't simply just walk by 336. You have to touch it to go by. You have to walk on it and in essence sort of become a part of the space as you, as you pass by. And uh, they're proposing two elements that would reinforce that, um, not at the curb point because we have parking along the, the, the street there, but set back from the curb, uh, some sort of planter and bench elements uh, which would mimic the planter, the permanent planters that we have in our downtown now uh, that are, that are um, developed and maintained each season by uh, Bennington and Bloom. Uh, so it would continue that particular component of our, of our downtown streetscape, but also provide a sitting, seating element uh, as the park space is extended into the sidewalk. The second piece that, that we were really excited about was the idea of creating an intimate space deeper in the site, deeper in that canyon that I referenced earlier, uh, so that as you entered this little intimate space, there would be a place where you could arrive at, removed from the streetscape, removed from the traffic and everything else that goes on in the street, uh, and simply have a, a place to relax, to gather your thoughts, to read a book, uh, to listen to music, to do anything that you might want to do. And so the, the really interesting thing about their design, and I, I sort of feel funny talking about their design, um, and, and I've, I've asked them to, to chime in at any particular point, but we really like the idea that their design created a kind of entry into that inner space. Uh, and so you see a little narrowing of the walkway uh, through that uh, resulting from the, the circular wall that they've created, also additional seating, uh, to guide you into that other space. And once you've made that little journey, you arrive uh, at, at a place that is not on the street. And we were really excited about that. Uh, the third uh, or next challenge that the space presented was that one of scale. Uh, the, the, the shot to the west, uh, the three-story bank building to the east. Uh, and so they masterfully uh, identified a way in which we could introduce that human scale uh, with this circular wall that reflects that circular theme that they developed within the space and provides a number of different assets. One, it screens the space from that utility space that is behind that wall in that particular rendering. Uh, it, it creates an element which is human scale as opposed to a, a three-story brick wall, uh, but it doesn't attempt to hide the brick wall in any particular way. 
uh, and it introduces an opportunity for adding a material, a softened material, in, in, in their concept being one of uh, a, uh, a weather uh, strong wood, uh, which you, you'll see in the pattern, patterning of that wall, and then the wall being softened itself by the introduction of vegetation on that wall. And so uh, it sort of creates that space in that room uh, once you enter uh, the space. Uh, the water feature uh, proposed along uh, Katie's shop um, we think introduces a great opportunity for uh, water movement and sound and everything that that might bring uh, to the space. Uh, and then lastly, there is this space in front. And this is the one that I think captivated us perhaps the most. Uh, where the uh, narrowing of the paved walkway into the inner space occurs, uh, there is a grass space. One of the things we talked about was having both hard and soft surfaces within the space. Uh, the vegetation on the wall, a hard surface and softness. Um, and this tree uh, that you see planted in that particular area and the grass uh, that is introduced behind that sitting wall uh, it creates a, a wonderful place, and, and we we were we remarked about the fact that they they illustrated a couple of children uh, sitting on that wall. And the one thing you can't see in that still photo is that the next thing that they could do is roll back onto the grass and just enjoy the softness of the grass underneath the tree. And so we were really excited about the ideas uh, that they were able to generate to transform this eyesore of an empty lot into a true uh, asset uh, for our downtown. Now, the second space that we want to talk to you tonight uh, is Merchants Park. Now, the gift there, uh, we all know, is a gift by uh, Merchants Bank of the park space to the town of Bennington. Uh, the goal uh, that we envisioned was to enhance an important downtown public green space. And I think that the, 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 the thread, the design thread uh, that we held on to as we went through this process uh, was the fact that we were enhancing what is already an important downtown public green space. And, and we'll talk about that as we go through this. We had a different design team in this particular instance, the constant being the design committee and uh, the design professional that we were able to take advantage of was Elizabeth Thompson, uh, AmeriCorps VISTA person who, uh, who has been wor worked this summer uh, with the Bedford <coughs> County Industrial Corporation. Uh, and in the same way that, that uh, Kelly and Ryan offered to uh, give of their services uh, uh, pro bono to us uh, to assist us to get to where we got, uh, Elizabeth uh, was also willing to do the same uh, in, in regards to merchants. And of course you see there a picture of merchants, how, how it exists today. And so we took a different approach with merchants. The, the intimate space of 336, which has naturally the, the, the handprint of, of Heather on it, uh, we felt that the, the community aspect of Merchants Park uh, needed more of a community handprint. Uh, and so uh, the design committee determined that the best way to achieve that was to, to conduct a charrette. Uh, a charrette is a fancy sort of architectural term uh, to describe a gathering of people uh, with a uh, goal in mind uh, and brainstorming ideas for achieving that goal, uh, whether it be a building or whether it be a public space like Merchants Park. Uh, and so uh, we developed uh, two basic uh, charrette goals that we wanted to achieve, and that charrette was held in this room. We wanted to catalog the property's assets, and we want to identify the site use options that would exist on that particular site, and you have that list of those poten potential options there. And so we also did a site analysis on merchants, uh, looking at assets and challenges, uh, and uh, the two particular, three particular assets that we, we felt were most important was one, the proximity to businesses and restaurants and its central location. And one of the fascinating things about that open space is that it is surrounded by a certain kind of street vitality, restaurants, shops, um, and the, the art gallery at Fiddlehead. 
uh, a great deal going on around that space. Uh, secondly, again, as was the case with 336, it's kind of a blank slate for design and use ideas. It's, it's a big open lawn. We know how it's been used in the past. Uh, it, it doesn't offer a lot of constraint to us in that regard. And the third piece that we thought was actually very important was the, the existence of the, the mundane, the existence of the drive-through canopy and the driveway. Um, and, and we thought that those were uh, definitely uh, important assets. Now, um, the principal challenge that I think shaped uh, our uh, design approach uh, was what we have all experienced if we have uh, used Merchants Park as it currently exists. For instance, with our, our uh, summer concert series that the BBC once held uh, each summer. And uh, that is the noise and safety consideration from the streets that surround Merchants Park. And so we thought that that challenge needed to be addressed uh, in any particular design scheme that we developed. Uh, and so uh, as with uh, 336, we developed a design program. And I would highlight the three elements that are on this list. Uh, and this design program was very much generated from a very large group of people that attended this charrette. Um, it was a wonderful two-hour conversation about uh, what could happen uh, with Merchants Park. And it ranged uh, from, do you leave it as it is, it, it doesn't need anything else, to uh, here's the ways in which we can enhance uh, the use of that particular space. Uh, the first uh, important uh, design element that came out of that conversation was to use the canopy as a covered stage venue. It's there, uh, it's, it's a solid piece of architecture, uh, and we would probably be foolish to think that it had to go away. Uh, that other piece that I just talked about from our challenges uh, produce uh, or develop a barrier for protection from passing traffic. And we talked a great deal about what form that barrier could take. Is it a wall? Is it a fence? Is it something else? And we'll show uh, the ideas that, uh, that we settled upon. Uh, and then I think the overall writing theme is that whatever happens at Merchants Park, it needs to be a multi-purpose, flexible space. It needs to accommodate a great many things that we can envision today or that we might not envision happening there until five years from now or 10 years from now, whatever the time frame might be. It ought to be a space that will adapt to the kinds of uses and needs uh, that the community uh, develops. And so, uh, with the help of Liz Thompson, uh, much the same as we did with, uh, uh, with Kelly and Ryan, uh, we developed a schematic proposal for what could transform Merchants Park from the, the lawn that it is now. And, and I've described it as a lawn that you walk by. In the same way we talked about just walking by the space of 336, uh, this is very much just a place that people walk by. You, it's interesting, if, if people thought that this tract of land was something to walk on, you'd see a path worn from Putnam Square over towards uh, your Belly's Deli. Because people would walk through. The grass is great, because nobody goes in. So we wanted to create a way in which to, to make them go in. And so you see on the left, a rendering, a view, uh, looking up Pleasant Street, across North Street, of the northwest corner uh, of the uh, park space. Uh, and then on the right, you see a plan, uh, which uh, Liz helped us develop, uh, which contains uh, a few very important elements that I just want to mention tonight. Uh, first of all, uh, it's hard to see from, from a distance. But the, the part that you can see is that the driveway and the locust, the locust canopy of the trees that were originally planted along that driveway remain. We've, we concluded that that was an important element that would be difficult to duplicate, uh, difficult to replace. Uh, it provides shade, it provides backdrop for the park from the street. And so we thought that that should remain. We have, though, proposed that, and very light ghosts you see there, that the pines that are also, that are located in front of the locust stand be removed. 
because we felt that the pine trees really didn't add a great deal uh, to the enhancement and use of the park. Uh, pine trees are not the kind of thing you sit under. Uh, the locusts, on the other hand, aren't the kind of a tree that you would want to be under. Uh, and so that's the, the backdrop piece. And, and of course, the canopy remains too, as long as the driveway remains. We knew that we had the infrastructure, the site uh, elements uh, along at the back of what was the, the former merchant's bank, um, the, pave, the paver walkway that's there and the walls that shape it. We saw no need to propose that any of that be removed and thereby saving the expense of removing those elements. Now, the other main design component that we address in our design program was the need to have separation from the street. And we, we, as I said, we talked about fencing and walls. We decided that we didn't want to do fences and walls. We didn't want this to be a space that was designed, looked like it was designed to keep you out. And so we, what uh, Kelly, uh, I'm sorry, what Liz proposed uh, was to introduce a series of planting beds uh, and you see one of those planting beds in the rendering, uh, planted with perennials, uh, which in the, if you look at the circular walk that transects the park, uh, along Pleasant Street and then along North Street and then at its southern terminus as you approach Putnam Square, there are three planting beds, uh, which essentially prov provide a barrier from the street. That's not a wall and it's not a fence but it gives you a sense of separation from the traffic. Uh, and so that leaves the interior of the space uh, for the multifunction uses that very likely would involve the use of the canopy and the stage area there. Uh, there are two access elements that are proposed for the park. Uh, one of them uh, begins at the rendering in the left, which is that paved element uh, that draws you into the interior of the park from the north. And the second is that path that I could never figure out uh, why didn't, it didn't develop uh, in the space. That path that would take you, in essence, from Putnam Square <coughs> to Pleasant Street and beyond. And so that path becomes the boundary between the open green space and the planting beds along the street. Uh, the last elements uh, that uh, Liz proposed and that we were very excited about, uh, some fixed seating along the path uh, on its uh, uh, edge along uh, North Street, uh, another element of fixed seating uh, towards the uh, northeast section of the park uh, where a water feature would be located. That water feature is yet undefined. And a third bit of fixed seating down uh, just to the right and above the stage area, uh, and then utilizing the space near the locusts and the walkway behind the bank uh, for seating and tables uh, for, that people can move around, can put them wherever they want, a place to sit and have lunch, a place to sit and be on your laptop, uh, a place to sit and play board games or what have you. Uh, and so uh, we came out of this process which was a long process. There was a, a lot of thought that went into this and a lot of cooperation from a lot of different people. We came out of this process, we think, with two really exciting and legitimate ideas for the ways in which the town could utilize these two spaces. And so that brings us to the question of next steps. Uh, and we've, in we've titled this process Creating Community Parks Downtown. And so the next steps to create these community parks downtown would involve uh, select board approval to move forward. Uh, and that first piece is to determine whether the select board views these schematic design ideas to be appropriate directions for us to pr proceed. Um, Secondly, would be then from your comments and input to produce final design uh, materials, um, as I said, per your input. Uh, third, determine a project team and identify the town components in that project team, much the same as was, was done with the Memorial Park uh, next to the blacksmith shop. Uh, probably the most important piece, uh, develop uh, uh, project cost estimates uh, so that we would have some handle 
on what each of these particular projects would, would cost us. Uh, and then uh, project funding is obviously going to be the thing that bridges from empty lots and underutilized spaces to uh, enhanced space. Uh, and that would include the possibility of uh, municipal support, uh, either direct monies or in-kind services. Uh, there was a great deal of significant in-kind uh, assistance from the town at uh, the Memorial Park. Fundraising grants, uh, community donations of services and materials, uh, then the, the permitting process that we would have to go through, and then the development of appropriate construction uh, drawings and specifications. And so we want to close, but I want to uh, offer uh, Heather in particular uh, and Kelly and Ryan uh, the opportunity to offer any uh, particular other aspects that they would like to. I know Heather has a good message that she would like to deliver. But we want to offer a thank you um, on behalf of the design committee um, to uh, Elizabeth Thompson, uh, to uh, Kelly and Ryan here with us this evening, uh, to Heather. I think we're all in, in uh, great gratitude uh, to Heather, to Merchants Bank, uh, to Michael Harrington for all of his assistance through the process and getting us hooked up and connected this evening. Uh, and lastly, the many citizens that participated so thoughtfully in our charrette, which took place here. And so I want to open it up, uh, first of all, to, to Heather. Uh, if you want to offer that last particular sort of uh, pep rally thought that you had, uh, and then to take questions from, from the board. I have no idea what I'll really say, except that I've had plenty to say at the design committee meetings and uh, poking everybody to get going quickly. Um, and this has taken a year. Um, I bought the property in May, and uh, in July it transferred to the town. And this is July, the next year. So. Um, I've been looking at that piece of property since who knows when. I remember when it was a little cafe, a little all-night place where you could go have breakfast. People would leave the bars and go there to get their coffee before they went home. <laughs> um, and it's, it's just, uh, interestingly enough, when we were, uh, John Shanahan and a group from probation and parole and I went and started digging out weeds. This is quite a while ago and we found all kinds of stuff, including a diner plate and two knives. And I believe Katie has some glassware <laughs> that she'd found when she was putting in her garden in the back. So um, it, it, I just feel like I'm emotionally tied to the place. I've always thought of it as a place, I think everybody somewhere deep down, sometime during their day needs a quiet place to sit and it's not the coffee shop and it's not the ladies' room, <laughs> it's just a place to go and breathe and think. And uh, maybe you're there by yourself, or maybe you're with 10 other people, but they're all by themselves too, and they want to be. So that's, that was my dream, and uh, it's coming very close. It's changed a lot since a year ago. I had a file this deep with pages that I'd torn out of magazines, and I should have showed them to Kelly and Ryan, <laughs> a couple of them were. Oh dear. <laughs> no, you can't do that, Heather. And no, the park is not going to be done by September of last year. <laughs> so I've had a wake-up call, but um, I'm still really fired up about it, and I think it's, I just love it for Bennington, because I love Bennington. So. Thanks, Heather. Thank you. Thank you. And so what kind of questions have we generated this evening, or is the discussion one that needs to, to, to progress to another night? No. Uh, I'm really by uh, trade and otherwise not someone likes to sit around and wait. So what's the timeline of getting this park for Heather and for the Merchants Bank? But what can we, we've got a nice bullet point uh, where we've got to go. That's how do we get there quickly uh, and not have another year. I know the design part is one of these, the, the foundation, uh, but how do we get to the, let's get the, 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 the shovel in the ground. I think the first step in that process is to put some numbers together. And I, and I think that that can happen in relative short order, particularly if we use the model, again, that was used at uh, Memorial Park on South Street. Uh, with those numbers in hand, we have to formulate a way in which to reach out to the community, to reach out to benefactors who might have a particular interest in either one of these projects. 
And it does raise the question of whether we attempt to do that uh, sort of simultaneously or whether we separate the two. Um, I, I would be hopeful to suggest uh, that by next spring, uh, we might have resources in hand that would allow uh, work to begin at either place. Noting, I suppose, that the, the actual improvements to 336 are probably more involved in the kinds of improvements we were talking, that we're talking about at Merchants. Um, but I, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. I, again, I keep going back to Memorial Park. Uh, those of you who were involved in that will remember that actually, actually the improvements there were phased, um, centered around the, the placement of the fountain. Uh, but the pathways and landscaping and lighting uh, were all done in a series of steps, in some instances utilizing uh, grant monies from the state. But uh, I think it would be important uh, to, particularly to maintain our friendship and, and the sanity of Heather, uh, to be able to see something happening in the next construction season. That's, that's good to hear. Um, what about, before I turn over to my colleagues, um, the, the neighbors on 336, you know, Katie is here. Um, what, what about the uh, fiddlehead on the other side? Is this going to be a sufficient setback or accommodation to the, the neighbors? And how, how have you dealt with that? Well, in particular with, with Fiddlehead, uh, we've, we've taken pains to make sure that we did, don't impact the Fiddlehead property uh, in any particular way. Uh, the wall that we talk so much about would be offset and not uh, a part of the structure, uh, attached to the structure of Fiddlehead. Uh, that access question that I raised uh, would be addressed by uh, essentially a hidden door, a passage, uh, from the park space into that utility space behind. So that would, there would be a door in the wall uh, that would not be apparent unless one opened it. Uh, now, access now is currently uh, gained to that utility space, and there are propane tanks back there and rear entrances to those buildings along North Street. That access is now gained from behind, uh, I'm gonna call it the left bank gallery, I, I don't know what else to capture. Uh, but you know the building that I'm talking about. Uh, and, and that access comes from uh, the CCV parking lot. Uh, but um, because we're not sure that anyone can guarantee that continued access from behind uh, uh, Catbird, uh, we thought that it important that there be access from the public space into that utility space. Uh, exciting, excited. How long does it take people when you put a new park in to really get used to using the park, to making it part of their daily lives? It's an interesting question. Yeah. Ron, Kelly, you, you got any thoughts? Um, well, you might want to come up okay. so that they can hear you out there in the other world. Well, hopefully and that'll just, happen. Just identify yourself, Kelly. Oh, sorry, Kelly Clark. Uh, one of the designers of the first Welcome. part. Thank you. Um, one of the key parts of the design that uh, Mike talked about was was walking through the park when you walk on the sidewalk. So we're really hoping that that will make people start to use it really quickly. Um, and you know, I think when I think as long as there's enough press and when it opens, it's in good shape. You know, that people will get excited and will come check it out right away. And it's a very visible location, so I don't, I don't see that being a problem. I'm not looking at it as a problem. Yeah. What's that transition time to all of a sudden it becomes, it becomes people's park. Yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> there's no, there's no way yeah. to predict. It's in a visible location, so I think okay. it should happen pretty quickly. Thanks. I have another question, if it's okay, Mike. Uh, Tom. Mike, you, thank you, Kelly. You mentioned when you talked about Merchants Park, the canopy remains as long as the driveway remains. We, no, actually, the, that, the canopy that and the driveway remain. Yeah. Period. There, there won't be any change in that. Well, we saw asset where okay. one might consider just lost utility. Okay. Uh, the canopy certainly addresses uh, the, the need for a covered performance 
location. Uh, and uh, though it could be enhanced by maybe elevating it uh, a bit, but that would be expensive, uh, it would serve that purpose as it currently exists. The one thing that would need that we've talked about uh, modifying is the drive-through underneath the canopy, which now has curbs and an island. Uh, and we would envision that those that space between the curbs and the island uh, would be infilled uh, with a material so that you would have a flat surface uh, underneath the canopy. Would still allow the movement of vehicles uh, from Pleasant Street to North Street. And, and the reason that we thought that that was uh, appropriate was one, the farmer's market and the ability for uh, those vehicles that service the farmer's market to have site access directly uh, and would allow the vendors in the, in the market to be able, able to utilize their vehicles from the drive. Uh, access for performers to the stage venue uh, with their equipment rather than having to uh, schlep it all the way from uh, one of the adjacent parking lots. Uh, and we even talked about uh, a place where, and we know this summer Ryan Hassett has put together this, this wonderful uh, wagon tour of Bennington to, to bring visitors uh, around the community. Uh, we envision the drive as being sort of an important stopping point uh, for that kind of function. It could be a, a loading place, an unloading place, um, and, and really in a very nice environment. Thank you. That's it. Could take a while. <laughs> Try to be short, please, because I think we're running up against the clock here. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I I, I would I wonder if uh, the answer to Michael's question in terms of when does the community fully embrace a park? Maybe we know that from the farmers market, which is when you start needing bathroom facilities for the amount of people that are there. And I wonder if, if there's been any thought to uh, that. I hate to even go there at this point, but it, it, if, if we're really successful, we could end up with a situation that's tough on merchants um, if we didn't have some plan for, uh, for the number of people that might use it. So was that in the thinking at all for the, for the uh, merchants part? No, it wasn't. And I, and I think that there has been reservation generally on all our part about how we introduce that kind of facility within the community. Yeah. I would suggest that that particular site is maybe not the most ideal place for it, though there is need, uh, but it would, it would encroach on the use of the site, if you will. Um, so no, we did not consider um, facilities uh, to be at Merchants Park. Actually, we did talk about it briefly, not as part of our parks, but um, I had, at some time during this process, I had spoken to a really wonderful stone artist who lives up in Stowe and um, was asking her about, you know, the possibility of her doing some work here and probably was, her work probably wasn't appropriate, but the first question she asked me was, where are your public restrooms? And I said, well, there's one here, and there's one here, and maybe if you buy a candy bar here, you can go use their Not restroom. Quite. And she said her, she does so much stonework, and this is what she's done for her whole life, and her comment was, unless a town offers public restrooms that are visible, and this has always been a pet peeve of mine, but every town, when I travel, that's the first thing I want to know, where are the restrooms, and are, do I want to go in them? She said, unless the town offers visible, clean, nice looking restrooms, you're gonna have people doing it outdoors. That's what we and found even, at the farmer's market. And even if, and this could be somebody with a three-year-old child who has to go really quickly. Go stand over there, pull your pants down, do it fast. Um, so in my mind, after these two parks, or even during these two parks, I think that's what, before another third park goes in, I think we need to figure out where those restrooms are going to be. Really important. That was nice and clear. I have some design questions yeah. and a, a safety question and a few other things, but maybe I'll take it up with you later and okay. please, in the right. name of and, expedition. And we can put this on another agenda, too, because yeah. there's nothing. Uh, that we have to really say yes or no to today because I think that the 
exchange is really good. Uh, I hadn't even thought about the, the bathroom, uh, restroom areas. Uh, those are the type of things that <coughs> we should hear about, talk about. So this is really a preliminary. Let's call it Absolutely. That. So, uh, but just to, if there's something that you want to get out there today, so that they can give that thought the, for the design committee, please go ahead. I'd love to see the uh, water features incorporate some sort of uh, renewable energy, if possible. I'd love to, I always hate looking at those things and wonder how much electricity is involved mm -hmm. in circulating water. Mm -hmm. So that's my great one. John? Yeah, no, just really, really nicely done. Um, you know, the 336, very small space, but it, it built with the curves, the uh, aesthetics that you have there, the landscaping, the, the centerpiece, I think was a, a nice piece of artwork, the water incorporation, it turns it into a very nice, open, intimate space that really, I think, would allow people to want to walk downtown, not, even if they're not going to stop at that park, but just to walk to dinner instead of drive there. So very nicely done. Um, and then Merchants Park as well. I, I see the same uh, aesthetic appeal. So just kudos for doing what, you, what you've done. And I think it's in good taste. And I, of course, the generosity of the gift as well. It's very appreciated, I think, by all. I'm excited for it, Heather. You, you have been talking about it with me for quite some time, and uh, I agree. Uh, let's get a shovel. Stu, do you think the town could lend us one for, for Heather for the groundbreaking? Lend, lend you a shovel? No, Heather for the groundbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can. We can, we can provide shovels. Yeah. Beautiful design. Yeah. You know, very good concept. It would certainly be an asset to our downtown. So I look forward to seeing it come to fruition. Thank you. What I'd like to see is another visit uh, with next to the, the bullets about the next steps, some timelines and some costs. Uh, Numbers. Yep. Yes. Uh, because that's going to really trigger both the investment by public and private. And I think we've got to get that word out on the street. And the sooner that can get done, the more realistic this, the next spring construction is. Yes. Uh, so. Uh, Let's just keep in touch uh, through Mike and uh, Michael uh, so that we can make sure that's happening uh, and then revisit in a you know, couple months probably. Wonderful. And we'll do it. That's all right with the rest of the board. It makes sense. Okay, so there it is. You've seen everything there is to see. There's a lot more work to be done, a lot more uh, questions to be answered, um, and we'll get them to you just as soon as we know them. Um, in the meantime, We'd love for you to comment. What do you think? What do you think of all this? Do you think it's going to work or does it need more planning or more uh, design work? We'd love to know. Uh, like us on Facebook. We'll see you soon. Jeff Grimshaw, BNN News. This is BNN, the Bennington News Network.